This replay is guaranteed to blow your mind and you probably will never see it happen ever again. Today's replay focuses on Bartek on Roids who is gonna have just the our most outrageous game of World of Tanks I've ever seen and especially in a tank like the Trashante which is the tier 8 Italian heavy tank auto reloading vehicle that is to all intents and purposes pretty mediocre at tier 8 and this replay I have no idea how it came about but it has and of course we're going to showcase it in today's video hopefully you guys do enjoy we've been focusing on really pushing out the content and hopefully you guys do enjoy make sure to leave any comments or queries or anything that you want to see next or if you've had a replay similar to this then make sure to send it in to the email link down below but straight off the bat an easy 300 damage done but when you're playing up against bz176 the newest level of power creep in world of tanks then you'd probably be thinking hmm i wonder if my bishante is going to be able to really stack up against it now luckily for him the bz has already lost pretty much all of his health and he's now just a one shot and when you have the turret armor that the bishante has and when you get a nice easy shell into the lower plate that doesn't actually hit using the horrible uh, accuracy and gun handling that the Bisonte has to all intents and purposes yeah pretty annoying uh, not to have removed that vehicle but either way the Tiger 1 thinking that he can duke it out in this ridgeline I don't know but apparently he, he decides that he's going to do that and he's going to be punished quite hard, heavily for doing so so the key thing that I want to focus on in today's replay is just the kind of thought process that must have gone on in Bartek's mind whilst playing this because you guys can probably learn a ton if you haven't already reached the pinnacle of World of Tanks as I'm sure most people and most of us will never probably have a game this good and I guess that's the premise of today is trying to showcase how you can have games in vehicles that are you know pretty average and still come as one of the top tier 8 games that we've seen in the most recent patches of World of Tanks if not ever um, so yeah brilliant brilliant replay in this heavy tank now straight off the bat it is a favorable matchup it's tier 8 so that really does help but at the end of the day if you're able to carry this hard in a tier 8 game I'm sure you could still perform really well in a tier 10 game but off of the uh, start of the game, he's been able to pick up 1400 damage. Nothing spectacular, but he does shut down the BZ early on, taking away part of the RNG. It's kind of like removing an artillery, to be honest with you. And of course, eliminating the possibility of losing probably like three quarters of the hit points in one shell, because, you know, a tier 8 heavy should really be able to do that consistently. Yeah, it is what it is, but easy shots into the Tiger 1 who obviously doesn't understand that the Bisonte is a autoloader and for some reason keeps pulling out in front of him. No idea what was going on in that brain, but obviously not too much. But either way, 2600 damage has been done already, but don't worry because this replay does not stop there. And you see a nice easy shell onto the SDRV kind of getting lucky if that was me that would have hit the sky somehow um, but luckily it does manage to actually pen and hit the strv so really easy start to the game he has lost quite a decent chunk of hit points however and of course not ideal when you're trying to carry um, in this sort of game and already the team are down by just over one and a half thousand hit points and so you really do need to preserve that hit points in your top tier heavy tank especially once you've taken the middle since it's uh, one of the most vital positions you can take on mines and I'm sure you guys know that if you're watching this video you guys know how crucial this central position on mines is um, and of course taking it is going to yield you the best result you can possibly have now a nice little shell into the back of the type 58 of course the tier 6 kind of feels bad to be honest uh, being able to hit that vehicle but either way a nice little couple of bounces coming in from the camping spot that you always see those pesky little TDs. Now, there is no surprise that the Bisonte here has three marks. And I mean, if it didn't, it would be a travesty, especially considering this game. But I can assure you that um, the three marks are well warranted on, uh, on Bartek's part here. And he unloads really nicely into the side of the ST1, not even allowing him to fully reload that shell and picking up just under 5,000 damage and 1,000 assists so far. 
So what you've been seeing is a range between both uh, tracking assist, he's got a little bit of actual assist but for the most part just literally getting that tracked assist which is always nice and something that you can utilize in auto loaders being able to re-track opponents and stuff like that that really helps you out and of course uh, maintaining that standard damage that you can put out against tanks like the SU-100Y who are just never going to be able to bounce you. So you guys might be thinking well yeah he's done 5,000 damage but surely it's not going to get that much better because there's only 7,000 hit points on the enemy team left. He can't possibly get that much more or an outstanding replay or one of these replays that is just completely blows everyone else out of the water surely because you know, you'd have to get nearly all of the damage left in the game to have one of those. Don't worry, because you, you're going to find out as we move through this replay. Now, there are a few vehicles on the enemy team that you have to be a little bit worried about. Nothing too spectacular at this point since the BZ's gone and the STA-1 has gone, along with that pesky little Swedish tank destroyer, the STRV. But there is an EOC even 90 that can stroll up and clip you out. But he's pinned down by the teammates in the bottom side of the map, the Southern Spawn, the is 2 s and the KV-3, and vehicles like that. And unfortunately, he does manage to miss against the T-34 85M, which is a little bit disappointing. Two shells go missing, but remember, this is the Italian heavy tanks, and they are just literally beyond trash. So, yeah, it's just annoying. Um, but either way, he tries to go for that extra shell. That's three shells missed on the pretty easy shell on the T-3485M but of course doesn't manage to hit a single one and hopefully that might change with this last shell. He does actually hit but of course it bounces and this is where you must be absolutely fuming having bounced the shell on the T-34 having missed three shells on him and now having to wait a ton of time to fully reload and get all three shells back in your tank so super annoying uh, so far but uh, I guess the reward will come in the end and a nice little shell into the T-34 secures a little bit extra damage and of course if you were going for your marks of excellence not that it really matters at this point in the game having picked up 5800 which would be more than enough to go up uh, if you were going for your three marks but of course you don't want to stop at 5800 damage you want to keep going and that's what we're gonna see so the hill on mines, super important, super crucial, and it's because of things like this where you can find Tiger Peas, or, well, not just the Tiger Bee, but any vehicle out in the open down where, you know, on an encounter battle you'd have the cap circle over here, and a lot of the opponents will be focused in this sort of area when they're pushing, and a lot of the times they overcommit and go into the area where that Tiger P did, and that's where they make the mistake and where that position where you just saw that is going to get nerfed at some point so you can't shoot down on heavy tanks uh, when you take this position so that is getting nerfed in the uh, update 1.20 that's coming out soon um, so be aware of that when uh, it comes to playing this game but either way the A44 here doing really really good job and uh, managing to take out a few people on the flank in the southern side of the map. So the game now takes a little bit of a breather in this middle proportion uh, of, the, of the video and that's because uh, he's able now to move forward and come into contact with the rest of the enemy team. Of course that T-34-85M that was being a little bit of a pain in the backside and of course trying to focus on this A44 that's causing a bit of trouble for his teammate the TPPVTU. Of course the problem with the A44 being in that position is that if uh, for example, no, the player in the TVP VTU was to poke and try and get shell. You find that there's often a lot of people in this sort of position and you're seeing there the problem uh, with those tanks and he does indeed bounce off of the Type 58, the Tier 6, of course. And now he is starting to become a low health target that the opponents can soon finish off where that's where you're going to have to rely upon using the auto loader or auto reloader that the Bisonte has to come away with a victory. So at this point, the team is not looking good. We've got a Borsig that is on what, like 60% health, an E25 on full health, and of course an ARL V39 on full health as well. But the Bisonte here 
is starting to look very, very poor in its health points pool. But the A44 does indeed get caught out in the middle of the map and is shut down very, very easily. Now he knows that the T38 Type 58 is going to try and poke, so he pre-aims exactly what you need to do in the game. And of course, really probably triggering that Type 58. Uh, probably thinking he was going to get a free shot into the Visante when he wasn't looking. Now that's not the case and it allows him to pick up just over 7,000 damage. And now the Dicamax, who sat in the base in the spawn farming away on the ARLV-39, does actually get spotted and alerts our player here to be able to actually turn around and focus on this Dicamax because once he's out the game then you are kind of more secure in the way in which you can approach the rest of the game. The Tiger actually gets spotted from behind and a lucky shell there manages to go into him. The Type 58 on the enemy team also out in the open bounces again using that awful accuracy that the Passante has which is really troubling uh, when it comes to trying to get realistic uh, shells and uh, kind of constant shells into your opponents and now he really is a one shot for the opponents and once again bouncing off the type 58 it's like he can't get a rest in this game and especially having done the amount of damage he's done I would be fuming at the amount of bounces and I probably would have thrown myself away long before uh, <laughs> long before I actually managed to finish this game off now Having done 8,300 damage, you would be expecting your team to easily be able to win. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not the case right now with the Tiger 1 and the Dicamax still alive and on a decent amount of hit points between them. So at this point, you have to play very, very passively. A HE round from either tank could potentially take you out. And so, yeah, you've got to... Uh, pull down into the positions that are going to suit you best and that is where he pulls down to try and get hold down I guess and he manages to find the Dicamax. The Dicamax is obviously aiming and unfortunately for him he's back in the garage before the Dicamax can manage to actually aim properly. So yes eight and a half thousand damage done in probably one of the most mediocre average bad tier 8 heavies on mines against things like the BZ so yeah I mean the fact that this result was even possible in the Bisonte with its poor DPM and pretty poor armor and pretty much terrible gun accuracy and gun handling yeah it's uh, it's really nice to have seen but there is still one tank left alive on the enemy team the Tiger 1 and luckily he finds a shell getting himself hold down the Tiger 1 misses and it's all over for the Tiger 1 potentially as he loads the final two shells into him and now he waits to fully reload. Can the Tiger 1 get the final damaging hit on the Bisonte? No he can't and now he's fully reloaded ready to hit that last final shot of the game and by god I was not expecting 9400 damage in this tier 8 heavy tank. This is genuinely the best game I have seen in terms of performance tier for tier and in the tank that was used that I've seen in a long long time. Even when you compare it to tier 10s that managed to do 13,000 damage, this is a tier 8 heavy tank that is not particularly very good still managing to pick up the amount of damage that he did. But how does this fare in terms of XP, bonus XP, blah blah blah, crew XP? Let's have a look at the post game stats, you guys are going to be amazed. So what does the most insane game of World of Tanks actually look like? Well, it looks like this. 254,000 silver made within this game. Of course, a mastery badge, bruiser, hand of god, jewel is fire for effect, shell proof. And of course, a pools medal, a Spartan, steel wall, high caliber, top gun, and 2,694 base experience, meaning that this is by all means one of the highest tier 8 base experience games that I have ever seen. Period. One of the highest I've ever seen. 9,378 damage in a tier 8 Bisonte with 10 kills. 10 epic medals. This is, by all means, the best game I have seen this year. And hopefully you guys do agree, of course. Maybe you think that this isn't the best game. And leave that in the comment section down below. Have I overestimated how great of a game this is? Because yeah, I'm... I'm amazed. It's mainly down to the tank that he was playing in and of course coming away with the result that he did. 
Thank you very much for watching and if you want to check out more amazing replays like this and of course looks at tanks throughout the entire tech tree of World of Tanks including premiums then make sure to check out some of these videos on screen which showcase some amazing results as well and hopefully you'll join me by subscribing on the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.